It is officially my favorite season, and that's burbot season. Now we've been sneaking out already and catching a few fish a night. You don't have to wait until March for, you know, that's prime time where you can get the day bite and more numbers. January, February, those are big fish months for us. We don't get as many, but if you catch one, it's usually an eight, 10, maybe a 12 pounder. It's pretty gusty tonight. We're actually setting up the hub shack right now. A little bit later, we might go and do some truck fishing, hop around, check some spots. We've been seeing upwards of 20 fish a night on live scope crews in the area. Usually about every 10 we graph, you get one to bite. So let's set up shop here. Hoffman's got the old retreat running. Let's see if we can put a few burbot topside. Put it in reverse tear. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in Just like that, we're on the board. We've had a number of fish come through already, suspended, a lot of them four feet off bottom, a couple high riders, 10 feet down under the ice. This one came in so tight to bottom, I got about eight inches of dead zone. And I could just see the bottom flashing and flickering. Just dropped it all the way down and look at that beautiful creature. Get another one. I love it so fun man i just like you catch one of these things and i'm good like that just made my whole night well let's catch a couple more we could <laughs> oh nice fish dude nice, dude i love it <laughs> love it it might be burger time oh yeah we're gonna have to rock paper scissors for who has to cook and All who right. gets the fish <laughs> Ooh, i'm wasting a shiner for the head but i like them by the stink Obviously with burbs, big, bright, glow, stinky mess. <laughs> the nastier, the better. I've done videos before, so I won't go into too much detail, but big old upsized hook lets you glob stuff on. A little kicker blade, got a rattle epoxied on this one. Some extra glow, gotta have the bait buttons or cut up a rubber band or use a little chunk of Elastec. Because when you're pounding bottom, those middle heads will fall off like every freaking three minutes. And this way, you uh, literally don't have to put middle heads on again until you catch another fish. And I got 10 pound mono. I love 10 pound mono for birds. Have that little bit of stretch for when they're rolling and thrashing. A 38 inch tuned up custom rods Vulcan. Freaking love this rod. It's a beefy walleye rod. So I use it for like number six rip and wraps. Um, oh, I'll put my line in my line clip. <laughs> That'll break on the 12 pounder. I use it for like number six rip and wraps, big jig and wraps. It's a pike rod, big walleye rod, light duty lake trout rod, and a perfect burbot rod. That was so fun. Oh my gosh. And it's early. I don't know what time it is, but the sun literally is just setting right now. Had walleye slide through. It's actually a gorgeous sunset. We already got a burb on the board, baby. Doesn't get any better than that. We're kind of set up on a cool spot, too. We've got yeah. our trucks parked with a couple of holes drilled over there, which we've done well over there before. And then, I don't know, just kind of nice being able to tuck in, cook some food. And for sure the wind blocks. The <laughs> yeah, I feel bad sitting in the shack, but it is nice. Yeah. Wish well, we maybe. had something cooler to look at. This yeah. is kind of boring. <laughs> Watching them slide in. Right now we're setting up on a classic steep break. 
right off of a big flat. We're actually kind of on a point right now. It's uh, 29 to 32 where the house is. Just 40, 50 feet that way. There's cabbage weeds and a little coontail up on top in like 15, 16. So, I mean, that's just 40 feet away or so. So you can tell it's a really steep break. Back out behind us is 70, 80 feet. And just the classic burbot. Deepest water in the lake. Steep breaks adjacent to it. Leading up to flats where they'll spawn. Uh, they like that kind of sand, harder bottom for spawning. And yeah, just a, a numbers game. Sit here and if we graph 10, hopefully we get one to bite. And like I said, that one right there. It's already worth all of the effort, but we still get to eat food and maybe catch more, so. And the fun thing too is, man, we're starting to get like a little bit better idea of what's gonna happen in the next couple of weeks. We are so close to them biting during the yes. day. Like we are, it is so finicky. You cannot do it too early around here. Yep. But if you do it too late, you're watching everybody else, <laughs> watching their Facebook feed. But <laughs> yes, and there's really, really distinct windows right now for when they're moving through. Every night, it's like seven o'clock to seven twenty. We graph eight of them, and then you'll go another hour and eight. Well, I can't remember what it was. Eight twenty to nine or whatever. We graphed another eight or ten of them. Just like every hour, there's these windows where you'll see nothing for an hour and all of a sudden, as soon as you graph one, you better be paying attention because you're gonna have eight of them in the area working their way through and we'll just wait for the next window. Make some burgers and fill them probably. All right, wish me luck. I wanna catch just one. <laughs> Got some bacon burgers. Of course, we gotta get that pan, right? <laughs> taking too long out here. I'm going in the shack. I don't care if I smoke it out. Let's shut that off to be safe. Knocky, knocky. Ooh, my hands just warmed up 30 degrees. to that and we'll be cooking man Ooh. <laughs> easy turbo Burgers in the grease, nothing but health food tonight. <laughs> As you can see, the plastic spatula that we brought out is not gonna cut it. Plastic spatula. So, we've got a nice clean pair of raffle pliers. And we got a mark coming in. Right, you catch that, I'll flip this. Oh no, oh no, oh no. That's a goal, man. That was a bad <laughs> uh, We suck again. The flyer's turn. I just can't even handle that. The flyers <laughs> are working great, man. I think the split ring gives us that, like, oh, yeah. little gentle touch. Uh-oh. Rut row, Raggy. There we go. Yes, oh, baby. Dude. Come on. Look at that tulipy flying on the graph. Look at these burgers on the <laughs> ground. Yeah, actually, you know what? <laughs> you have a really good point. Somebody gets two bottom buns. I don't know how that <laughs> <is>. <laughs> All right, let's get a couple more on there. Yeah, buddy. Nothing but health food. <laughs> Burbits and burgers. Have you showed off our minnow bucket yet? Heck yeah, look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> at least those ones have water in them. Well, if you only leave a little bit, they're fine. <laughs> okay, is this not the most like cinematic-y smoke you've ever seen coming off of just hot food? I'm ready for a nap. Look at this. 
just geeking out over this. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Nap. But we can't nap because it's just about time for another wave of burbs. Oh, look at that. Oh, dude. Please. Yes. No. Oh. Blob just comes up like a volcano and then says bye. My heart's beating a million miles per hour. Lake trout and bourbon are the only things that do that for me on the ice. That would have been perf. Hi. <laughs> that would have been perfect. Oh man. Kind of just showed up on us. That was nasty. Just big old blob. And he turned like he was going to come right in. There, oh, there he's off to the side. I could spin that. Do it. I kind of don't want to mess with it, though. Or that's a minnow head falling off of my spoon. <laughs> Nobody really knows. <laughs> Dang it. That was a minnow head. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. That was my minnow head falling off. Go. Into the old minnow bucket. <laughs> You're still chicken. You still got a little burger action hiding down there. Yeah, I'll get there. <laughs> I'm so full. This is the grossest sound effect ever. This is the grossest sound effect ever. <laughs> this is the stickiest hook in the freaking world. Ouch. Come on, burbs. We're seeing plenty. We might have to switch things up, though. Do we want to get cold? Go for a little Baja? Just leave the hub here? Slide over to that next little point and just see if things are happening? Sounds painful, but we'd probably <laughs> have better luck than we're having right now. It's going to be cold. It's going to be a lot of work. But, like, if we just catch one more burb. All right. Before we do that. <laughs> yes. Random, annoying, dumb tip of the day. Especially if I'm truck fishing. And it's cold outside. I will just do a little, little scoop of, like, a trough of where my line would potentially be hidden from holding my rod out the door because if you leave that there and it gets frozen those snarly little edges the line will get stuck in all the time you don't need water in your minnows if you're just using the minnow heads this way I can just throw them in my pocket hop around whatever don't have to worry about another bait cooler now it's time to musk up I'm gonna send down a rip and wrap first to have in one hole for a little noise, a little commotion, a little vibration. I take that back treble off because when they hit this thing, I don't want to have to try to dig two sets of trebles out of there. So I just leave the belly one on. I upsize it to about a number four. This is a VMC Barbarian treble, big hook gap. We'll let you do sucker shiner heads for tonight. I'm just using fat head heads. You probably can't see anything that I'm doing, but just know that I mean well. <laughs> Pinch off the back sides. That's cute. Cool. Super important to glow up your baits with something that works. 
like a headlamp apparently. Nice $18 UV light. Usually the LED glow light goes right there. So when I'm doing the old two for one with a rip and wrap and a jigging spoon or jig head or whatever you're using for a kind of your traditional burbot bait, I'll keep that rip and wrap like eight, 10 feet off bottom, higher in the water column, give that nice big rips. So honestly, I'm not super coordinated with the whole two rod thing and it's extra awkward trying to do out of a truck door. So I will half the time just palm them both split apart obviously and when I'm not graphing fish I will just rip them in the same cadence now if I have a fish coming in and graphing I will switch hands and I'm like I said I'm not super coordinated with it but I'll try to just rock that jig and rip this until I can see that they're going to commit to one bait or the other or which one they're looking at and then I'll usually just bail on the other rod but I have had times where even, especially with burbot, when you can't see them come in real tight to bottom, where I'm sitting here holding both, make sure you got a good death grip on them. So be sitting here not paying attention and all of a sudden wham, and you have to set the hook with both in your one hand. Oh, there's a high mark. What is that? That is a, ooh. It's going down though. Oh boy, I gotta get rid of this rip and wrap rod if he's coming. That was really weird. You gotta hand me something, hand me something. My brain won't even know which one to set the hook with, so I'm gonna always oh, going to you. He's great on you. Did he oh my gosh. He's gonna eat, dude. He's hovering all over you. He must Yes, dude. Nice. Drop it down the bottom and chowed it. That was awesome. That thing came in hot. I'm all wrapped up in my rip and wrap rod and we'll worry wow. about that later. That was so cool. It feels pretty good. It looked like a big old blob. They're all big out here. <laughs> They're all big and wait for it. That was awesome. Maybe you just saw a little color. Ooh, it's feeling the right kind of line when it gets to the hole. I got it on a jig too, so we're good on hooks. Ooh, baby. Leader. He's right at coming up, pull, pull. Not big, but oh. nice one. When his head is turned up, the, oh yeah, you're good. Oh man, I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> I'm fumbling. <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> I don't have a great grip on them. There we go. Dude! It's a pretty one. Yes! Look at the mud pull this right out. on the belly. You can see I could write my name. Right on the snow. <laughs> Here's your fish. That's funny. Dude! That didn't take long at all, man. Ooh, look at that. You could write yeah. your name in there. Teed up. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. That thing came in like it was on a mission. Awesome, Look man. Look at that mud. Yes. Yes. That... Hey, before you sit down, come check out my hole real quick. Still. That's ridiculous. I don't know how well you can see this on a GoPro after dark, but he's got the cleanest hole on this side of the Mason Dixon line. There's little eddies going on in there. These ice defense things are literally legit. Like, okay, so you see that. I just scooped mine out 30 seconds ago. And we're already frosty. Already another scoop's worth in there. Oh, I got a fish. Shoot, I'm not recording. Now I'm recording.
What is going on? What did it do? It just barely looked, but there's tulipies like jumping around all over the place or something. Like all of a sudden, freaking stuff was scattering. You got a bourbon chasing bait? Must, if you can't tell, I'm sitting in my truck, fishing through a little crack, watching the live scope screen on my phone right now to warm up for a minute. And of course a burbot comes through as I'm not ready for anything. Dang it, the one time I stop, now my mom's texting. Hi mommy. <laughs> oh man, that's what I get. That is what I get. Here comes a mark. Oh, he's turning. Why are you turning? He looks like he's about 500 feet long. No! I know I'm zoomed way in, but that was like a three foot mark. There was my teener. Oh. We're down to a six inch hole. <laughs> oh, my live scope is literally frozen in. Holy crap. Uh Oh my gosh. I can't get my live scope out of this hole, it's so frozen. I don't no, it's, I don't have a chisel with. Oh, got her. Holy crap, that was scary. Okay. Well, with that, we're gonna call this a night. It's about 10.30 and get home and get some sleep, but you know what? We caught a couple of nice fish, average fish, but we graft a zillion fish. They are on the move. Burbot season is here. It's only gonna get better from here on out. And uh, usually about that March 6th through the 15th or whatever is kind of like the deal when the daytime bite is going on. You'll still get these after dark windows and stuff, but uh, that's when it's just hot and heavy and you can catch them. Your best bite might be at 11 a.m. to noon. So, uh, fun day, mission accomplished. Caught a couple nice fish. Man, are they a blast. And the cool thing is, when the walleye season closes in Minnesota, you can go out and catch a fish that actually fights back. You don't just have to catch crappies and bluegills for the next month. You can use your walleye gear, your beefed up walleye rods, and uh, go out and catch a fish that actually bends the rod, and you might catch a 10 pounder trophy. So I'll be definitely sneaking out and doing a lot more of this over the next few weeks. Thanks so much for watching and go out and get one of them slimy critters for yourself. <laughs>